In today's video, we're going to be talking about what the heck is the potato reset? What can you eat on the potato reset? Why no fruit? And what you can drink or not drink. What the darn tootin' is a potato reset? Potato reset is a short-term plan, anywhere from seven days to six months. Some people even done it for a year. Um, I recommend a month to really get the benefits from the potato reset and have some long-lasting changes that are just going to blow your mind. They did for me anyway. The potato reset is a potato-based diet that also includes non-starchy vegetables, herbs, spices, and minimal fat-free plant-based sauces. A little bit about my story, if you're not familiar with it, I have had Hashimoto's for, well, I've probably had it for a long time, but I got diagnosed about 12 years ago in my early 30s, and um, I had gained 100 pounds. I was sleeping 15 hours a day, I was severely depressed, and I eventually had to stop working because I just couldn't function. I was like a zombie. So when I was finally, I was finally diagnosed and got medicated and all that, and I started to become a somewhat normal functioning human, the low end of functioning. I was able to go back to work and, you know, do the things that people do in their day-to-day -day lives. And I managed to lose 40 pounds initially, and I think that was just because I was actually doing normal human activities, like getting up and showering and going to work and back. And I didn't really do a lot to lose that 40 pounds. After that, I had to work for it and, um, you know, exercise and eat right for the way I thought was the right way to eat. And it was a struggle. So um, eventually I got into veganism. That was uh, almost 10 years ago. I still ate oil and processed stuff. Basically, we just took our regular way of eating and converted it into a plant-based diet. You know, so we didn't really know what the heck we were doing. Um, but we did, we lost weight. My husband and I both lost weight. I think my husband lost 60 pounds, uh, even though we were kind of eating some processed food. And I lost 25 pounds. Um, but after that, I gained and lost that same 25 pounds. So that took me from, see, two, I was 260 pounds when I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. I got to down to like 220 and then I had to work on it and went vegan. And I think I got down to like 180 or something like that. So, um, but I kind of just gained and lost that same 25 pounds for a couple of years. Uh, and then I got into learning about whole foods plant base and learning about calorie calorie density but even though i understood it and i learned it i still had a hard time applying it and being consistent <laughs> uh, i still sometimes struggle with consistency but overall i'm consistently way better now than where it used to be as far as like the last three years like ever since i did a potato reset it's been not too terrible so um yeah, so eventually I ended up getting down to my 100 pound weight loss goal. So I got from 260 to 160. Yeah, so that's a little bit about my story, but I basically am a junk food addict. I've, I grew up on eating highly processed foods. I hated vegetables. I was a picky eater. I'm still pretty picky, but I've gotten a lot better. And I feel like the potato reset was that pivotal moment in my life that just change things for me forever and that's why I'm so passionate about uh, showing people that eating potatoes is healthy and delicious and just they're magical so that's why I'm so passionate about it and that's why I wrote the book and uh, yeah my goal is to help as many people as I can transition to a whole foods plant-based diet through the potato reset. I hated vegetables and I did this for a month and uh, I was able to eat broccoli and taste the sweetness in the broccoli. It didn't taste so bitter to me. That was huge for me. That was like the most exciting thing for me. Another benefit is weight loss. It's a great way to have some slow and steady and healthy weight loss. I lost two pounds a week, which I actually don't consider slow. I, I think that's the max that I would recommend for weight loss. I don't think losing any faster than that is healthy because you're, it means you're doing something that's not totally sustainable. But obviously, if you have a lot of weight to lose, you start this plan at 
a higher weight. If I had started this when I was 260 pounds, I'm sure I probably would have lost like 10 pounds in a week. I am a junk foodie. I grew up on highly processed foods. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. I would not touch a vegetable growing up. I was a picky, typical kid, I think. I still struggle with it sometimes, but this has helped me a lot to tone that down. Uh, the more potatoes I eat, the less junky stuff I want because I'm satisfied. So that's another benefit. And um, another thing that I found help that I got out of this was I got really in tune with my hunger signals and satiety cues because potatoes are so satisfying. They're, I think they're very high up on the list of one of the most satisfying foods on the planet. And they are slower to digest. So I feel like I am full longer and I don't need the snack, so that keeps me away from junk. The potato reset is a great way to transition to a whole foods plant-based diet. So whether you're eating a, a junk food vegan diet or a standard American diet, this is a great bridge in between where you are now and you know getting to a whole foods plant-based diet, which can be quite overwhelming in the beginning if you're just gonna jump into a whole foods plant-based. Uh, it's probably not gonna taste that great. So, this is a great way to train your taste buds to really enjoy real food and hopefully stick with a whole foods plant-based diet for the rest of your life so you can be hella healthy. Basically, you can eat unlimited amounts of potatoes. And what I mean by that is eat until you feel comfortably full. Unlimited does not mean stuff your pie hole until your stomach hurts in pain. It means eat as much as your stomach allows that's comfortable because we don't want to be uncomfortably full. Yeah, you can eat a variety of red potatoes, yellow, gold, russet, sweet potatoes. Technically, sweet potatoes aren't a potato, but we include them just because they're healthy and some people have some digestive problems or allergies to potatoes. So sweet potatoes are in a different family. So if you're allergic to potatoes, you can still get on by with the sweet potatoes. So yams, purple sweet potatoes, Hannah, Japanese, all the potatoes. And there's a whole list of non-starchy vegetables on here. It may not cover everything. I don't have enough room on this little guideline sheet to include every non-starchy vegetables, but this will give you an idea. So vegetables like carrots, cauliflower, celery, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, bok choy, leeks, uh, mushrooms, onions. My favorite vegetables to eat on the potato reset is zucchini and broccoli and romaine lettuce. I like to keep it simple. As far as sauces go, you want to stick with plant-based sauces that are fat-free, so ketchup and mustard, um, relish if you want, barbecue sauce, just try not to go too crazy with that because it is, a lot of barbecue sauces are very high in salt and very sugary, so they're kind of hyper palatable, but try to find the one that's maybe the healthiest you could find. I find like organic brands tend to not be as um, highly processed. Try to avoid high fructose corn syrup if you can, but just get, because that's, that's an ingredient that's in a lot of ketchups and stuff. But if you can't, just do your best. Like, I don't want you to overthink this part because this is a very minimal part of your eating. And it's not, we're not meant to eat a ton of condiments every day. So if you're having a plate of fries, instead of pouring the ketchup all over your fries, you're gonna wanna just put a little bit of ketchup on the side. Just dip it once, eat your fry. <laughs> you can have a little bit of maple syrup or date syrup on your plan, but it's meant to be part of a sauce. <sighs> your main beverage should be water preferably, but if you absolutely hate water, try adding some cucumber slices or a squeeze of lemon or lime. Another thing you could try is sparkling water, just the unsweetened, unflavored kind. Just add your own lemon or lime to it. It's a little bit healthier and um, you can also drink tea or coffee if you're already a heavy coffee drinker. I would not recommend trying to tackle your caffeine addiction at the same time. This would be very difficult. Getting off caffeine is a whole other mountain to climb in itself. I mean if you're feeling like you can do it, you can try but honestly I feel like focus on the food first and then get off the coffee but what I'm gonna say though is no um, creamer or sweetener added to your coffee or tea at this time. So you're gonna have to drink, you don't have to drink black coffee, but you can have 
um, like almond milk, unsweetened almond milk or unsweetened soy or something like that. Just add a little splash to your coffee if you don't like black. But yeah, none of the sugary stuff, not even the fake sugars because that's just going to mess up the taste bud thing. You know, if you're wanting to reset your taste buds and get away from junk, I don't recommend any of the um, sweeteners, not even stevia. And then what we want to avoid altogether, avoid, no, don't do it, is eggs, meat, fish, oil, nuts, seeds, avocado, so any kind of overt fat. Dairy products such as milk, butter, cheese, sour cream, processed sugar, so white sugars, and artificial sweeteners. There's nothing wrong with nuts and seeds and avocados. They are very healthy food, but there's something that maybe you want to add later when you're not working on overcoming an addiction to hyper palatable foods and also when you're not wanting to lose weight anymore you could add those kind of foods back in and we avoid animal products just because they're not healthy and they're just very calorically dense it's better for the planet to avoid animal products and better for your health and better for the animals and then oil is a very highly processed food food it's not even really food but they've taken something healthy an olive and taken everything out of it and left the oil. And if you add a little bit of oil to your food to cook with, yes, it'll taste better, but at the same time it coats your tongue and it makes it so you can't actually taste real food for what it is. So you need to add salt and tons of, well, there's nothing wrong with adding spices, but like restaurant food, they have to add all this stuff to it, especially salt to make your food taste great. So it's just overall better for you. It's cleaner. It's easier to clean your dishes and stuff without oil and it doesn't stink. Like now, if somebody cooks with oil in the house, it smells awful to me now. Why no fruit? I get this question a lot and there's nothing wrong with fruit at all. Um, it's a very healthy food. In fact, it's the first food that I recommend you reintroduce after doing a potato reset because uh, fruit is so easy to digest and um, it's kind of like when you're doing a potato reset, it's almost an elimination diet. So I feel like that is the next best food or probably Mother Nature's best food out there. So yeah, fruit, have some fruit after your potato reset. And, uh, but yeah, we don't have fruit just because it is, um, we're trying to reset our taste buds and we're also just trying to keep things very simple, keeping the, anything that has a sugary taste to a minimum and um, trust me, it's worth it because after the reset, fruit is going to taste like candy to you. It's going to be your new candy, but in a very healthy way. And another question I get sometimes is why no beans or why no grains? There's absolutely nothing wrong with those either. It's just a matter of keeping this so simple that you don't have to make all these decisions about food. All you got to decide is how you want to prepare your potato and that's it. You can use salt on the potato reset. I recommend using it minimally, so don't cook with it. Um, just sprinkle it on your food after you've plated it because it's going to be on the surface of your food and you're going to taste it more and you're not going to need as much. The goal is to kind of minimize that a little bit um, just because it does make your food hyper, a little bit hyper palatable and it could cause you to eat more than you normally would. So this is all part of getting your potatoes or your <laughs> taste buds. This is all part of getting your t training your taste buds to really enjoy whole foods in the way nature intended. Again, you can get the potato reset in print on Amazon worldwide, or if you like an ebook style where you can just put it on all your devices and print off the pages that you want, you can get that on potatoreset.com. So if you're wanting to try out a potato reset and you're looking for support, there is a free Facebook group you can join and I'll link that down below. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram at potato.wisdom and my potato reset account, potato.reset. Some of the stuff you'll see is similar, but the potato reset account is specifically where I host Instagram potato reset challenges. And it's a lot of fun because people tag me in their 
potato creations and I share it and it's a lot of fun to have a little community of support on the Instagram and it's very inspiring to see what other people are making on the potato reset. So check those out and um, hope to see you either in the Facebook group or on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any other questions about the potato reset comment down below so that I can include this your questions in the future videos or the FAQ page on my website. All right, thanks everybody and potato on. And I'm out. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye. Well, hello there everyone. Welcome back to the Potato Wisdom channel. This is the mic right here, okay? All right. Oh, oh, oh.